Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to um, Snark and Spark. That is me, I'm Emily. Um, and this is gonna be short and sweet and right to the point. Um, I really just want to um, do like a, my year in stitches for 2020 and my year in books um, in 2020. So I did some quick little math and tallying and counting and whatever um, and I have some stuff and it's just nerdy little geeky stats so if that sounds boring don't watch if you're interested sure why not um, I like seeing when people say how many stitches they got done in a month and, and then like throughout the year I just I think it's so impressive because I know for me personally I only have 16 projects total but then when I see the thousands of stitches I put in just it at least makes me feel like I did something I accomplished something which is always great um, so I am off a little bit by about a few hundred um, I totally meant to go back through and like take end of the year like ending photos and record stitch counts um, before the end of the year and I just didn't get the time I didn't have the time to go back and do that um, so what I ended up having I had a I have 35,879 total stitches across 16 projects um, like I said I think I'm off by a few hundred with some of the projects um, that I didn't update so it's more I think it'd be more accurate to say that I'm in like the 36 thousands maybe 37 but I'm not like gonna push it um, of those 16 projects I finished 10 of them four are still whips or works in progress that are coming with me into 2021 sorry Kennedy has one of her toys <laughs> in her bed with her and then I UFO'd two of them um, and the two I UFO'd one was I mentioned it my dog destroyed it Moonlit Owl uh, and the other one I UFO'd is a project, um, is Philippians 4.13. It's a Bible verse, the, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and with a border, and it's really big, and it was originally going to go to my in-laws, it was going to be a gift for my in-laws. Um, I made the mistake of starting that piece like two years ago a summer ago um really only having jumped right back into cross stitch and so it definitely tested me and proved harder than i was anticipating um there were blending filaments and i almost said magnetic um metallic threads and lots of similar shades and the symbols and lots of lots and lots of counting plus French knots and quarter stitches and I'd never even done some of that and so Colleen having taken a break of about you know 10 years between stitching and then jumping right back in um, I definitely got a good chunk of it done but I started to get this like feeling of dread every time I had to pull it out and I just and it was on Ada, it was on like 14 count Ada, so trying to do some of those like quarter stitches was awful and all the back stitching and I just, yeah, I got really, really frustrated with it and with myself and I, I didn't want to hate my projects. Like I definitely took time off from stitching at the end of last year because I hated working on it. And I was, at the time I was pretty much a monogamous sticker, sticker, stitcher. And I was like, I didn't like that. Um, I didn't want one whip to influence me that much. And also, I realized I needed to be able to switch it up. That way I can work on other things as my... I'm so sorry, my nose itches. I can work on other things as I want. And that's worked out. So, other things. The ones that are coming with me are... Is Australian Dragon, Book Lover's Bookshelf... The library periodic table and the read read now the things I finished I'm gonna see if I can recall them if I can't I can't I'll move on but I know deck the halls I finished deck the halls yesterday 
Um, I finished one called like Stone Flowers, one or two. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I finished a Stormtrooper helmet for my husband. I made a happy birthday card for a coworker. I test stitched a little motif that was a kind of like a quilt block and it said be kind. I test stitched a pattern called don't be a dick. Um, I also test stitched a pattern that um, it was lipstick lasted longer, and it said I've had lipstick that lasted longer than the Confederacy. I also, I'm missing three. I finished Thistle by Nor Corbett. I finished my mini fox. Oh no. And I finished the year in chalk November. That's all of it. Awesome. Cool. Um, I also noticed, just as a fun little thing, I primarily stitched on Ada. A lot of the projects I stitched on Ada, um, but I've purchased much more linen and will have more projects on linen for 2021. So, there's that. Um, so, my year in books. <laughs> my little notes in my math and things. So, I read a total, don't be too impressed, <laughs> I, so I read a total of 62 books, um, which equaled 21,208 pages read. And so think about it, I technically made more little X's than pages of books that I read. Um, the average length of the books I read was 342 pages. The shortest book I read at 88 pages was a book called Forest of Memory by Mary Robinette Cowell. Um, Sci-fi, futuristic, very interesting, very weird. Um, the longest book I read was The Stand by Stephen King at 1,440 pages. I remember, I know I listened to that instead of physically reading that. Um, the most popular book, aka the book that um, I shelved on my Goodreads, um, 2,666,097 other people also shelved, and that was Jane Eyre. My least popular book was A Bad Night for Bullies. It is book number one in the Ghouls Next Door series by Gary Gislin, Gislain, Geislin, I don't know, um, and only 140 other people had it shelved. So I think that's very, that's very interesting to me. Um, my, the average rating I gave books was a 3.3. .3. I also like to look at, um, the demographics. Um, usually I go into a bit more depth and I will also look at, um, when I'm like, where, what kind of books am I reading of like, and I just kind of looked at that on like a dot graph. <coughs> The majority of my books I read obviously have been published um, more currently, like in the 2000s, but a few popped in from behind. Um, and, and I definitely, I do like to um, see male versus female authors and how I trend on there. It's, it ended up being pretty equal. Um, I had 29, 29 of the books were written by men. 33 of the books I read were bit written by women. When it comes to the men, though, it boiled down to two authors, Stephen King and Ridley Pearson, because I've been working my way through the Stephen King bibliography, so he made up a large portion of those. And then for School of Magical Stitches, um, we, were, we read the Kingdoms Keep, Kingdom Keepers series, goodness, which was written by a man. And then of the females, I've noticed I noticed with those most of them were like just standalone novels, um, which I found really interesting. I only really read like I read one series pretty much all the way through it by Serena Valentino, and that was the Villains series. 
because we also read that in School of Magical Stitches, but I it definitely seemed like a lot more, or I read a couple books of a series or whatever, or it was just two books or whatever, um, but not like I did with Stephen King and Ridley Pearson where it was multiple. I also like to know how I um, ingest my books, and so I looked at um, audiobooks versus physical books. Uh, 27 of my books were audiobooks, and 35 were actually physical handheld books of some kind. So it's really interesting to me that I'm pretty equal across the board. Um, it tends to balance. And then I had 12 that I marked as my favorites, um, which boils down to roughly one a month, which is also really cool. I did not intend that. And when I looked back at like the dates, it definitely was in chunks where it was like, I had a favorite, I had several favorites in like May and then several favorites later on in the year. Um, but in no particular order, I just have it from like, as the year went down. So like starting in the beginning of the year, I have The Gilded Wolves, which I mentioned, and it is by Roshani Chakshi. Chakshi? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Um, and that is the first in a series of the same name, The Gilded Wolves. Two of them are part of the Folk of the Air series, books one and two of the Folk of the Air series by Holly Black, and that's The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. I love Holly Black. I also have The Lost Girls of Paris by Pam, Je Pam Jenoff. This one was interesting to me. So I went back and read all of the Giver series. It's actually a um, quartet. There are four books that go together and intermingle within this universe of The Giver. Um, and I read them all four this year. I have the third one called Messenger as a favorite. And I did really enjoy that book. But none of the other ones I listed were considered a favorite. So it's just interesting to me. I have Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle, Follow Me to Ground, and I said her name wrong last time. I was close, but not right. Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford. Um, A Bad Night for Bullies. That is Ghouls Next Door, number one. I have the second book as a physical book, but if, you were, if you've seen some of my other ones, um, for the month of January, my challenge is to only listen to audiobooks. So if I want to read that one, I need to go get it as an audiobook. Um... And that is a children's novel. I have The Wild Robot by Peter Brown. That is the first book in a series. Also a children's novel that is excellent. Three Dark Crowns, that's number one. Even though it took me forever to read, I loved it. Then we have, last but not least, The Snow Fell Three Graves Deep by Alan Wolfe. I finished that yesterday as well. It was phenomenal. Please check out some of these books. Check out all of these books, whatever. Those were my favorites. That wraps it up. I said this was going to be short and sweet. I have nothing else I want to say right now. Um, I'll pop in later. Maybe I'll talk about my stitchy plans, what's happening in School of Magical Stitches and in Simi Sane, because I'm going to start working on that. I haven't stitched all day. I've been trying to get around and do things and clean stuff up and work out and do my, I almost said a bad word, do my stuff. But I, I want to stitch. I want to just sit down and stitch, and I need to put... I need a total of 4,000 stitches on something for the entire month of January. Ooh. So, uh, I'm going to go do that. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy New Year's. Congratulations, guys. We have made it out of 2020 and into 2021. But please remember to keep being safe and to take care of yourselves and to just breathe. <laughs> so I will see all you guys later. Be easy with your heart.